God bless saints. Uh, I'd like to take my scripture reading today from the book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24. And the word of the Lord says, Pleasant words as as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your word, Lord. We know your word is already blessed, Lord. May the inspiration come this morning, Lord, and bless us, Lord. May these words that be spoken bless us through this day, Lord. May you keep us in the palm of your hand and be our guide today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And the title of my message is Building Healthy Bones. And uh, as a context, I'll, I'll take Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. It says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of, for, of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitter and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. And many times as human beings, it's very easy to see the negative in people, to talk about the, it's news, bad news spreads like wildfire. They even say bad news sells newspapers. Nobody wants to hear too much about when somebody does good or when somebody is prospering or when somebody is doing well in the world. But let that person make a mistake and within a few minutes that news has spread. Sometimes we'll even see a brother or a sister. We think in our mind they're doing this. They're coming out from somewhere they shouldn't be coming out, going somewhere they're not supposed to. We don't even know the real facts of why they're there. But straight away we'll go to the worst possible scenario. But the the book, the word of the Lord says, pleasant words are like an honeycomb, not to the person only that you're speaking good things about, but also for yourself, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. It says, even in Ephesians, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Do it for the edifying and minister grace unto the hearers. The prophet says in the book, uh, Christ the Same, preached in Chicago in 1955, paragraph 27, you believe the devil can use your tongue. Certainly he does. Make you say things you don't want to say. Make you lie, steal. Make you tell things that are not right. Say bad words that God don't want you to say. The devil gets complete control of you. Well, if he gets all the way, all the way control of you, you don't know what you're going to say. You become a madman. To believe your tongue can be used for Jesus certainly it can so if it can be used by the devil it can also be used by jesus christ he says that when jesus christ gets a hold of your tongue he says then you sing the gospel you preach the gospel and speak good things and talk good things and say good words then you can become so completely surrendered to the holy spirit till he can speak a, he can speak a language that you know nothing about it won't be you trying to speak good things It'll be the Holy Spirit in you speaking good things that you won't even know. Bad word, bad things don't even come out from you. You're like a well springing forth of fresh water. I remember one time a preacher said that an old man helped him one time and gave him a gas stove. And he thought this old man was so kind. He needed that stove. He had no money and he needed the stove. And this old man said, no, don't even pay me. You don't have the money. Take it for free. And he came home and told his father that he, he described the old man and where this old man stayed and what that. And his father said, that man, that man robbed your grandfather. He's a crook. And this brother stopped talking to that old man. He avoided the old man. He never greeted the old man. He distanced himself from that day because of what his father said. Later on, a few months went past. And I think the brother saw this old man and he said, father, his father, see there's that, that crook you said that stole our grandfather's money. He said, that man, no, not, that's not the man. I was talking, I thought you meant somebody else. And he said, because of what somebody else said about that man, he avoided the man. He stopped talking to the man. He got a negative perception of the man. Yet he never saw that man doing, that man was only kind to him. Yet because somebody, his father told him, this man robbed your grandfather. And he took it as truth and he avoided the man and his perspective of that man changed. Yet it wasn't even true. Later on his father realized, no, that wasn't the man I was talking about. I was talking about somebody else. But because he told that, 
practice men also developed a negative attitude to the men and that's how our words can be that maybe somebody else that you have influence on can hear so you you don't like somebody and they'll also not like that person because of what you say the prophet says if uh, in the way i think pentecost failed paragraph 33 he says i have a deep respect for every organization and i think we all good every one of them i will not talk against them because i have fine brethren in every one of them and never on the platform under the visions have i ever seen the holy ghost challenge anybody and tell them there was wrong in the there was wrong in the wrong church i've never had it done he will tell me exactly what kind of a church they belong to and different things like that but never did he ever challenge anybody's faith and say you belong to the wrong church the holy ghost will not allow you to speak bad about people that's the prophet says even the people came up and the holy ghost never told a person you 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 following the wrong church and the wrong religion in the book a total deliverance paragraph 23 it says but you permit the devil to come and take over and all the time in your heart way down deep you know you're wrong when you do those things and when one member would talk against the other member you know that's wrong you're commanded to pray for one another not to talk against one another but to love one another and if someone is down let's pick him up help him now that makes us a unified group of believers now when you don't believe that then we don't obey god and we displease god and therefore our church our people cannot prosper the church cannot go on is because we disunified together and jesus said a little leaven leavens a whole lump as i say one person talking bad it moves from that person to the next person yet a group of people will have hate towards a person yet that person never did them anything it's because of what me i'm talking about that person i can influence other people also to feel the same way as if i feel of that person as our prophet says and if you feel something chock up uh, the way stop it right there move over here like a doctor out in phoenix said lord fill my mouth with good words then nudge me when i've said enough that's in the book hebrews chapter 3 he says if, lord you talk only good words and when i want to say something you nudge me and stop me from talking i've said enough amen and he says we don't get sealed so much the prophet is talking about when the inspector comes the railroad cars you got to pack it tightly if anything is loose they don't uh, the inspector won't pass that that car uh, that carriage it has to be packed that the things won't break it won't move while the train is moving and bumping around everything must be packed tightly and if you don't pack it properly he won't put the seal and he says we don't get sealed so much we too loose about things when the inspector goes through to inspect our life your lives to see if you're not just a little loose about things little loose about your prayer life little loose about that temper little loose about the that tongue to talk about others he'll never seal that car there it is and he says touch not my anointing do my prophets no harm for i say unto you it will be better for you that a millstone was hanged at your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea than even to try to offend or shake a little on the least of these that's been sealed you see what it means that's what the holy ghost the holy spirit is it's your assurance it's your protection it's your witness it's your seal it's your sign that i'm heaven bound amen so you need to get the holy spirit in you to let that sweet words come to have that healthy bones to have a good life negative words won't do you no good and the prophet says that negative words is satan speaking in you you need to get the holy spirit and then you'll speak it won't be you speaking it's very hard for a man to speak good things about other people all the time it's very hard for a man to see the positive in people's lives but when the holy spirit comes in you we can be like jesus christ that even when they hanged him on the cross he could say and say father forgive them for they know not what they do bad words will never come out from us because it will be the holy spirit guiding us may that word have a blessing to you let's pray dear holy father we are so thankful for your word lord we so thankful lord for the example that you set for us lord we so ex- thankful lord that you sent us a prophet lord to train us in these things lord that negative words doesn't benefit us at all 
but it rather we speak sweet words on build it's not only good for us for them that hear it but also good for us good for our soul good for our healthy bones lord make us live look younger and feel better about it lord let you be our example that even the prophet said when the holy spirit spoke he never even spoke bad about people that when they came on the platform lord we pray that you continue to bless us and be with us and guide us through this day in jesus name Amen. May the Lord richly bless you.